So John, thanks for joining us today. Could you give us a little background about your role and the club and for people who might not be familiar with Boys and Girls Club? Club is a great place to work. It's satisfying because you know you're doing great things for kids mm -hmm. and it's special in another way for me because I'm a former club kid All right, that's growing right. up uh, down in southern Arkansas. Had a great experience for years with club so it's cool to have come full circle yeah. now and uh, be part of providing those kind of opportunities for other kids and families. It's a wonderful place to be. We've got a lot of really talented, highly motivated uh, people who want to change the world. Mm -hmm. you know, few hundred kids a day at a time. So it sounds like staff's very enthused to do this oh, rather than being driven to do it. The, they are not required to do it. Uh, it's becoming more and more of a challenge to, to cull down those that mm -hmm. make it to the final stage, which is a pleasant problem to have. It's very high energy. They're very enthusiastic about it. Uh, they're so proud of the work that mm -hmm. they're doing. It's very cool. Your talent pool at the club looks very different than, than when you started. And you've had a fair amount of turnover at, at a couple points. How do you explain the level of talent that you have now, given, again, given the market size, given the location? Turnover is only a bad thing if you lose people that you wanted to keep. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't really happen a lot mm -hmm. for us because of a variety of things. Pay is one, but uh, people who intentionally gravitate to this business uh, they're a different breed of cat. They're engaged. They're, yeah. they, they're less about you know the corner office and the big title and sure everybody wants to get paid but that's never why you come to this industry. Uh, it's about the mission, it feeds your soul and part of the reason that we get the kind of talent that we do in addition to what we've talked about is we provide an environment where they can apply their, those passions and they can actually make a difference and we can measure mm -hmm. the needle being moved so they know they're scoring. That drives excellence. It, it also drives a certain culture and uh, can drive some alignment problems. What kind of culture alignment issues have you dealt with during your tenure and how did you approach that? Uh, we bring uh, major personnel issues to the full executive team now, mm -hmm. not just uh, following the traditional model of letting the, the executive team member under whom this is happening uh, mm -hmm. deal with it. Uh, that's uncomfortable sometimes, but you get other perspectives. Sure. And if we have an underperformer over here, it affects RD. It affects sure. finance. It affects everybody else. So uh, we all own the operation now, uh, kind of equally, if you will, at the executive team level. Makes for some awkward moments, you know, some constructive tension, but that's okay. Uh, and you got to keep it about the work, not about the individuals. Sure. What's the substance? Let's deal with that and let's bring it back to what's good for the kids that we serve. Frame it that way. Now let's do business.